And here is what the Lord wants you to get if you don't get anything else. He wants you to be committed to him Amen. through your trials. Amen. And I need people right now who are willing to say, God, I'm going to stay with you through thick and thin. Stand up right now. God wants a pledge on this morning. Because too often, the devil gets on some of our trails. We leave church. We leave family. We leave our worship. We just go
the devil's going to just leave me alone. But I need to tell you that's a lie from the devil himself. The more you try to do right, evil will be on every hand. So Satan, y'all, he's above. He's determined to ruin your life. His primary weapon is to steal your joy, to give you a permanent upside down face, and have you frowning more than your smile. In fact, I'm gonna challenge some of you now, whatever you're going through, put a smile on your face. Look at somebody and say, I'm getting my smile back. Smile while you're saying, brightness make perfect. You ought to tell the devil right now, you will not steal my joy. I don't care if I got two teeth. In Jesus' name, I'm going to put them together and smile the best way I can. Because he will not steal my joy. This, this thug is known by many names. All associated with bringing harm to your life. In Revelation, he's called the accuser, the deceiver, the dragon, the king of the bottomless pit. In other parts of the Bible, he's called the wicked one, the thief, the tempter, the father of lies, the ruler of demons, and murderer. He's known by those names, none of which have a positive impact on your life. He's a liar. He wants you to feel bad about how God created you. He wants you to feel like there's nothing to you. He wants you to believe there's nothing to your life, but he's a liar. He wants you to believe you're defeated before you get started. He's a liar. He's the king of the bottomless pit. He wants to throw you in the pit so you can have a pity party and forget to stick your hands up and pray and thank God for all your trials. He's a liar. King of the bottomless pit. He's a deceiver. Always trying to run game. Now listen, I'm around some of y'all and I hear how y'all try to run game. But let me tell you, can't nobody run game like the devil. Oh, man, he whispers sweet nothings into your ear. And before you know it, you're following behind him instead of following the Lord on Sunday morning. He's a deceiver. And I want you to know that this father of lies, this murderer, this deceiver is after everyone in this building right now. He's after you. He's not satisfied that you've made a commitment to God and his church. Now some of y'all are going to probably say, well, Reverend, if he's after me, I'm going to go back out there. When I was in the world, I didn't have these problems. But I want to encourage somebody today, don't go back. Don't go back. Don't go back. Some of you, I feel the temptation in your spirit right now. You struggle to get to church this morning. Who I'm talking to? I know I ain't, I'm not making my mind. I'm not exaggerating.
for you. Tell somebody, I will not be destroyed. The moment we decided to make Jesus our choice is the moment we became targets for the devil. Somebody gonna say, man, I should have stayed out there in that club life. Man, I should have stayed out there in my drug trade. I should have stayed out there with the devil. He didn't bother me when I was with him. And I'm telling you, leaving him is worth it. But the moment we decided to serve the Lord, we became a walking target for the devil. Why, why, Reverend, why would you tell us about him? Tell us about Jesus. I don't want to trick you. Yes, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, yes, let go and let God. Oh, yeah, all that's real. But so is the devil. Amen. And some of you need to grow up. You in children's church. Because you think the devil's not real. I said this morning at the 930 service, we ought to build a building they call it Babies Are Us. For all the people that don't want to face the harsh realities of life. But even in your Babies Are Us world, the devil is still real. And you have to understand that the devil is a relentless opponent. Some of y'all quit before you start. Y'all have friends like that? As soon as they start, they quit. Who plays video games? Nobody? I'm the world's biggest kid, I guess. My Wii still works. I know I'm supposed to upgrade or whatever's out there now, but my Wii, my golf still works. I play video games with adults that if they came winning round one, they quit. They stop right away. The devil does not quit. He's relentless. He will do everything he can to destroy you. Now, here's your challenge. You cannot be a quitter. Look at somebody and tell them, you? I mean, look at them. Look at them like I'm about to look at these guys right here. Look at them.
in 2000. And it's 2015, some of you women, you still crying over that man? Oh yeah, I'm with that. He hurt me so bad. When? Well, Reverend, it was 20 years ago, but you don't understand. I do understand. You allowed the devil to take hold of your emotions instead of turning that thing over to God. All right. Y'all, boy, y'all don't show sure went. Y'all went ghost up on that one. If he can't get through your emotions, he'll go through your finances. If he can't get you through your finances, he'll get you through your children. Come on, parents, you better talk to me. God, I'm worshiping you, but my child just cannot stay out of trouble. You gotta understand, it's not your child. It's not little Johnny or Sue. It's the devil trying to get to you through them. They ain't got to go to jail. I'm talking about those days where they just slam the toothpaste on the wall. I'm talking about days where they just leave their clothes in the middle of the floor. I'm talking about days when you say don't let nobody in my house and you get home and there's a house party. He's attacking you through your children. It's not your emotions, it's your finances. If it's not your finances, it's your children. If it's not your children, it's your job. It's not that supervisor. That's the devil. Because I've heard, I've heard some of you say, my, my supervisor is the devil. It's not the supervisor. It's the devil himself. There you are. There's a mic that says, hold it. Turn it on me. I know that I did. I did that. Yeah, I broke this up under here, y'all. Even that's the devil. Amen. Amen. He don't want you to hear about him. Let me kind of tell you what kind of opponent he is. Anybody ever played the Joneses? Maybe yeah, that's the old school. I'm saying the Joneses. The dozens. Hey, baby, that's y'all ain't great. That's too old school for y'all. Y'all, y'all about my age, now y'all playing. Uh, uh, talking about each other's mom. The comeback is, I gotta say something strong about your mom than you said about mine. And see, somebody who really know how to play the dozens, you don't wait your turn, you keep going. Yeah, your mom was so fat, then they try to say something before they start talking. Your mom was so ugly, and then they try to say something, you say, your mom was so says to be sober minded. Everybody say be sober minded. In other words, don't lose focus of what's real. Where I used to be drinkers. I would say current drinkers, but I figure you raise your hand if I say used to be drinkers. Five people used to drink. I got a good church. Come on, where I used to be drinkers. Used to be, used to be, something got you high. I don't know what it was. Marijuana, heroin, coke, weed, alcohol, too much beer. Some of y'all get high off yourself. You got high off something. The Bible says be sober minded for this very one reason. No person who's intoxicated can focus correctly. I don't hear nobody talk about, I'm a functional alcoholic. You a liar. That make you feel better while you're down in your 13 or 14 beer in 98 degree weather. Don't y'all know people like that in this hot weather? They stopped at my pants yesterday. They was on their porch at 10 in the morning. It had to be hot. Brother was sitting up there laying down in the Bible church. He said, I'm going to come real. <laughs> a sober-minded person can think, but a person that's intoxicated cannot. So the word of God is saying, be sober-minded. Think about it. Realize your surroundings and know that the devil is real. Satan knows he 
he can steal your focus, then he can take you back into the world. If he can take your mind off Jesus, he can take you back into the world. How many of y'all know I'm right on this morning? the devil's attributes. He said he prowls around like a roaring lion. When y'all get home tonight, Google lion prowling. Google lion prowling. And you'll see how, 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 how a lion, he just kind of, he checking you out. Somebody come up here. Come on. Big hand. Face him. JJ, trying to worship the Lord, trying to get us all together, let's say. Step up. You got to be. He said, back to the whole stage. Wait for me. The devil is this roaring, he's a prowling lion. I'm on black shoes. I'm on a charcoal black watch. He checking him out. He wearing a striped shirt. Oh yeah, raise your hands like you're crazy, Mr. J. Oh, he's a worshiper. Oh, he got a nice smile. He checking him out. He trying to be a clean cut. Young man, I got to get him to mess this up. Yeah. And see what he's waiting on, JJ, and those of you that are watching, he's waiting on JJ to lose focus and put his hands down out of praise. Put them down. Because if his hands are down,
mighty one at all. How does the word of God tell us to resist the devil? It says, resist him. Everybody shall resist him. The most important definition for the term resist is to hold on and not let go of your faith. I need another big person. I feel like I've picked on JJ enough. But I pick on you some more. It, it looked good on the camera when they say, you know, come on, our kids. Come on. I need, I need, I need to. Well, more kids, you know, you, you big and uh, <laughs> and no good. And I need, I need some little people. Little people. Um, you know. Come on. Okay. JJ, hold on to this pulpit like it's Jesus. With one hand. Alright? Don't break my pulpit. Just grab the ground here. <laughs> Y'all just saw that example I did with JJ earlier when I held it. Man, that's all beef. <laughs> <laughs> I got nervous. I said, don't be put his hands on my shoulder, Mike. Like, come a little. Right, hold on to this like it's Jesus. Alright? Our kids take this home, hook it like it, like a hook. It. All right, now children, y'all come, grab our kids' hand, hold our hand. Remember what I said. The greatest way to resist the devil is to not let go of your faith. Is to not let go of what you know is your strength. All right, all of y'all pull. Go ahead, go. Oh, I 
us wrong. Right? In fact, I don't want you. I want some. Come on. The Holy Spirit is giving a better example. Come on, uh, somebody else. Come on. Thank you, Ms. Rito. Come on. Then you get on this side. Because I'm going to show you what's, what's got to happen after you fall. Grab the hand. Grab the hand. Now, all of that, oh, y'all don't oh, like me. <laughs> some of us, this is what happened. We turned away. We got distracted. We lost our focus and let go of our faith. Now I'm down here with all of these vices, with the drug addiction, with the, the, with the temptation. Everybody shout whatever mine is. Whatever mine is. But y'all looking at me like I ain't walk on your street yet, but you got one. I don't know what it is, you have one. Now JJ is holding on to his faith. Here's what happens when one of you fall. Somebody got to be on duty. Somebody fall. 